All right, here we go. It's day four. I'm like, I'm already like, oh my gosh, it's day four. We're of the five day training. We're on day four. And so far, we're gonna we're gonna do, gonna do a quick review of what we've covered so far. So day one is the number one key to fast sales. Number two, day two, we talked about getting into conversations. Number three, day three, we talked about building out that call. That was yesterday. Today, we're talking about the four-part pitch, which I gave you a little brief overview yesterday in day three, talking about like where all of this fits in. But we're really talking about getting to the pitch today. So just For people watching replay or just dropping in, it's 30 minutes of uninterrupted time. Um, if you've never heard this before, I recommend not multitasking just so that you can take notes. You can be doing this. Otherwise, you're probably going to have to watch it a second time <laughs> to dive in. And some people like that. That's okay. Uh, yesterday, I did talk about our communities and how you can purchase. So watch that replay if, if you're not sure. But just a quick review of day one, there's four stages of buyer readiness and we're focused on stage three and stage four and not getting trapped in the long-term strategy of just educating all the time or trying to convince people who don't know if they want our offers that they need them. Like we can do that as a long-term strategy after we've already been making money, but we don't do that as our first strategy. And this is an overall business strategy that you will learn no matter what business consultant that you work with um, or if you do an MBA like they're all going to tell you you got to make money first you have to go to the quick sales first and foremost we want to focus on one offer one core offer that we're selling and the way I phrase this especially when I work one-on-one -on -one with clients is I talk about like What's that offer that gets you in the door? We don't need to start with, and I was the queen of this, uh, and I see this all the time. What do you offer? And people go, well, I do a lot. And if you're starting that way, there's a problem. We want to pitch one core offer that could work for the majority of our people, but we don't have to serve everyone. And in fact, you will actually get more clients when you narrow. And I know that seems just like a, a complete confusion point, but you will get more people because they can raise their hand and say, that's me. So when we speak to everyone, we speak to no one is the common marketing phrase. So we really want to look at like, what's the core problem for who that we are solving and providing a solution for? Like we really need to know that, especially as we implement what we are learning this week. So I just really wanna make sure I hit that. That we are focused on solution selling. And that means we are focused on building more authentic relationships rather than trying to do a big mass, uh, you know, add to absolutely everyone. If you do that, it's generally going to be a low ticket offer. And again, this is what I teach more in high paid woman. Like if, if you want to sell lots of people, something at a low cost, that's how that works. Or you can have a high cost to a few people. You get to choose how you'd like to work. So I like to work with the higher ticket offers. Just a reminder that I do have a freebie that you can download and it's five scripts. And these are different types of scripts. I know one of them is like after a networking event, the script that you would send to people. I recommend like making your own PDF copy so that you can edit it and make them yours. Now we dove into building up to our free call our value-based, results-based call. So we send them a DM, we acknowledge the problem, we provide some value right away. That could be a one-page PDF. We're gonna ask those open-ended questions so that we're gaining market research. And then ideally we're booking them onto a call. Unless you notice that they are in stage one or two, if they're in stage one or two, you're just gonna give them a resource. We don't need to convince them. We don't need to spend our time on them right now. 
we're still helping them by providing a resource. We're not ghosting them or leaving them out in the dark because we're heart-centered entrepreneurs. But if they are in that three or four, we can invite them onto a call. And using our time wisely, because again, today's, this week's five-day training is about getting sales quickly. It's about a, a cash injection, but also learning just overall sales strategies instead of doing all the marketing. So honing in on that, on the sales. And then we talked about actually building out that call. So that's a 15 to 30 minute call. We are not doing 45 minutes. We are not doing an hour. If you need to zoom and other things or just use your phone, set a timer and set it five minutes before that time ends so that that timer goes off. They hear it, you hear it. And we go, okay, well, we only have five minutes left. So I hate to stop us where we are, but I need to schedule you a follow-up call and then we can finish this conversation because I have another appointment, right? Even if that's an appointment with yourself. We have to hold strong boundaries as business owners. So this follow-up call in 24 to 48 hours is what we are talking about today. Now, again, just going to continue to mention this because the mind learns through repetition. The average consumer needs eight to 12 touch points. And we're saying average. That means, yeah, there's going to be a few that need less. There's going to be a few that need more. So just keeping that in mind as you build out your sales funnel. All right. So again, that's a 30 minute or 15 to 30 minute call. And we want to be super, super clear on what that is we're offering. So it's got a title. It's got a what you're going to deliver in this call and the value of that. Today, we're talking about that neuroscience based pitch. So most people make decisions based on emotion, right? If something doesn't seem fun, but you know you really need it, you still hesitate, right? <laughs> Most people, especially women, if we've got this super fun, awesome thing that's going to feel good and it's going to help us get to where we want to be, or it comes down to this other thing over here that's boring and dry and I've got to spend a whole day going to the doctor and doing these things that I don't really see the benefits of, which one am I going to choose? I'm going to choose the fun one. Even if the fun one costs money and this one didn't even cost money and I could do like we choose based on emotion. Okay. Now that's not the only thing, but emotion really truly drives that decision-making. So as we pitch, we don't want to lead with logic first. And that's what a lot of people do. There is actually a whole book on this. And if you want the title of the book, I'll get that for you all. Uh, it's a good audio book too. And he talks about how he was delivering lots and lots of these big pitches. Like we're talking multi-million dollar project pitches. And even with them, leading with logic did not close the sale. Now, not to say he didn't provide logic, but leading with logic does not work. We want to embrace the emotion first. So this is things that I often teach when I work with nonprofits. I'm always telling them, lead with the stories, lead with the mission, involve the emotion first, because if they can feel into the emotion, then they want to know the logical stuff. So what this is really doing is first and foremost, when our brain is developing, We've got the limbic or lizard brain that's forming first. This is where we need the emotion to hit. So it's traveling here. Now we're processing like, how does that affect me? And how does that affect others? So that's that second part. And now I want to know the logic and the logistics. Okay, so three parts. We're working first on emotion. How does it affect me and others? And then the logic. All right. Trust is key with all of these. So let's dive into what this looks like. As I, and I mentioned this one before on the previous slide, we require five or more follow-ups. Now, I have found with this process, generally that will shorten this. I have gotten more sales on that follow-up call than anything else because 
the follow-up is is right there it's top of mind you've you've given them value now you're working on the close and it's not at the same time so this is the fastest process there will still be people that say no or not right now on that call and we're gonna we're gonna handle that tomorrow in day five but I want to emphasize this follow-up and how important it is as we're talking about like we just gave them some feel good emotions. Then we're going to tell them like what's in it for them. And hopefully we were gathering that information of like, what was the pain points? We are gathering the information of like why they want this change, this, this shift. And if you didn't gather that information, you're going to gather that on this call, on this follow-up call. Now, a lot of times if you leave them hanging on the previous call, we're like, oh my gosh, we just, we ran out of time, which is why it's 15 to 30 minutes. It's okay to run out of time. It's kind of good if you run out of time that we need to schedule the follow-up and they want the feel good to continue. The purpose of this call is really truly to determine if, if you want to work with them, because there's some beautiful freedom and empowerment that happens if you're like, oof. After that last call, this person was draining. Like they drained me. If that was you, if that was your own perception is one thing, or if it was, they are literally a very, very high need person. You can kind of determine if you want to charge them more to work with them, or you just don't want to work with them. Uh, so you want to see if, if you'll also be a good fit for them. Will you be able to get them results? And that's the core thing that, those two calls can really help us determine because if you work with this person and you spend the time and sure, yeah, you get paid, but each and every person we work with is a referral for the next one or a case study to present. And if they can't be a case study or they can't refer you because they didn't get the results they needed and it might be their, their way they show up, we need to know that up front. Because if you're doing that time after time after time, you're not going to have this beautiful referral system that literally could be 40% of the people coming into you could be referrals. And that's a typical statistic that we see for, for building out leads and 40% of our leads should be coming from referrals. So can you get them results? We want to know what doubts they have. And they're probably going to voice them going, I don't know. They'll say little things and be like, mm, I'm not sure, or I really want this, but. So they're going to be thinking about whether they can implement it and what they think about you. So that's what this, this follow-up call is allowing us to do. So after that results-based, we do very, very much want to schedule a 24 to 48 call. So this is 48 hour call. And I, I want to specifically say this because as you're building your results-based call, what you're telling them to think about implement, you could say like within the next week, I'd like you to really implement this and then let me know what you think. Well, then they need a week to implement it. And if it's a week out, they're more likely to kind of forget about that, not do it. So even if you're like, they need a week to implement it, I would say, I'd love to give you a week to implement that. But I know a lot of my people struggle building those new habits. So I'd really love to check in with you in within 24 to 48 hours as you start to give this a try and see if you have any questions that are coming up. So reframing that to get them back on a call in 24 to 48 hours before they get off of that first results-based call, we want to go ahead and schedule. So again, if you know you're, you've scheduled it for 30 minutes, you're going to set the timer for 25 minutes. This allows you to go, oh, there's the timer we're running out of time. Before we get off the call today, I really want to get you scheduled within 24 to 48 hours so that we can make sure you've got the habits, see how you're processing this and how you're going to frame it to get them on that call in 24 to 48 hours. I will tell you, the further I've scheduled them out, whether it's a week, two weeks, a month, Again, that window of follow-up seems to get smaller and smaller. Now, 
if I kind of already had a gist that this person maybe wasn't ready, granted, my judging is probably a little bit better because I've built up that um, if in, compared to if you're new at this. Then you might schedule it a week just because you still want to follow up with them. You still want to keep them in this funnel process. And you could think about, too, what you want to either upsell or downsell them to. I'll give you an example. So we have High Paid Woman. Now, Rich Goddess Energy is a program within High Paid Woman that could be sold on its own. And so if someone is not fully ready to go into High Paid Woman, then I will say, you know, I just don't think you're ready for that right now. And, and I don't want you to invest all of that money and not get results. They will appreciate that. It builds trust. So I'll say, but I would recommend, I would love for you to work on your energy and your mindset so that you could be ready for that or just work on it so that you could then feel empowered to do this on your own. And that's a much lower ticket offer. It's a DIY offer like I just get like you purchase the course and there it goes and I would not say I suggest this to you and then leave it hanging I'm going to say I would suggest this to you how does that sound they'll tell me it's open-ended and then is that a yes or a no would you like me to go ahead and get you enrolled in that because I really do think this would be the best fit for you And determining if that person needs a little more push or not, I might be like, we're signing you up for this. It's this amount. There's payment options because I have that afterpay things available. And, and then set them up with that. Um, if I need to follow up some more, again, we'll discuss that in tomorrow's. So your timing is so important. All right, so we're going to talk about presenting or showing them your offer during this follow-up call. Now, this follow-up call, one thing I did not mention yet was how long should this follow-up call be? I normally like to make the follow-up calls anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes because if I ask and I get their permission to pitch them my product, then that presentation might be a little longer and there might be more questions and things that happen because it can turn into the sales call. So how you're going to present your offer, and we do all of this, we get your offer all beautiful and fancy and high paid woman. So you could either have a PDF, you could have it in like document format, whether you want to just have it on Canva or it could be in um, like a Google Drive Uh, I normally say put it in Google Drive first and just have it. And that way you don't get caught up in, because I know I do. Uh, I get caught up in trying to make it pretty and then it's never ready. Um, so we always put it in the Google Doc first. Then we put it into the Canva. And I have seen it plenty of times where people have had a Google Doc. And they presented that because it was something written, visual, And they sold, they sold, they sold it. So it does not have to be at, at its absolute prettiest, um, especially if they know it's a newer offer. And then some people do prefer to have it in a deck. Again, if you can have it in a Google Doc first, and this is just me going on a side note because I'm passionate about it, <laughs> um, that you can then copy and paste certain things and put it in your contract for them to sign when they say yes, okay? So it will serve you um, in maximizing your time and efficiency, which I am all about. However, that being said, everyone's brain works different in how we process information and, and put our stuff into, um, bring it out of our brain and into the physical. So you choose what works best for you. I've told you what I think, but we want to be able to present in a pitch of what our offer is. That's the main point. So we've had this call with them. We've asked them if they are ready to change. Now, I generally love to have them rate this, and this is an old coaching strategy that I learned a long, long time ago, was how likely are you to, to change or how much do you want to change on a scale of one to 10? Now, the coaching methodology that I had learned said if they are an eight or above, that's a yes, that's a go, that's a trust, meaning they are ready. 
So you can confidently know, like in this instance for sales, that they're more likely to say yes. If they are a seven or below in ready to change, then we would say like, what's keeping you from being an eight or a nine? And this coaching begins. And it's a beautiful thing because they start to see this ability that for you to help them in changing. As a change specialist, I have a change manager certification for corporate, I have cognitive behavioral change for the, the individual. Change is a hard thing for people. So you, you have to help them in this change process. That's, that's ultimately in solution selling and servant selling, which is more what I teach, uh, is really helping them through sales. But the coaching process is beginning within the sales process. You're getting them to say yes to changing. And some of them, even if they're like, yes, I want to change, I want to change so much, getting them to take that step forward is different, right? Like, yes, I am I am ready to lose the 50 pounds and I'm so ready and I'm making these changes, but I'm not making the big changes that really need to happen that's going to move the needle forward. Hopefully you get what I'm saying. Like, Some people will tiptoe around change and then some people jump in. We're asking them to jump in. So we want to help coach and guide them to that point. So again, some things that I'll do to get to this point is I'll ask them where they're at on that change. Getting them closer and closer to that eight or a 10. And we want to tell them all about our offer before we tell them the price. Okay. Now for a lot of people, they're What's like, that? For the kids. for a lot of people, they're going to want to know the price up front. They're like, oh, just tell me the price and let me see if I can afford it. And so a lot of times people don't like doing all of this, like schmoozing beforehand, but I'll tell you when it comes again, back to transformational servant selling, Allowing them to not think about the number first, position it where it's very, very high value, where they're now thinking, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can afford this. This looks really good. And they're thinking you're getting ready to pitch them $10,000 because of how amazing your offer looks and all these like little robust things like adding bonuses and all this stuff. Don't worry. We do that in high paid woman, but like, all these things, and then you say the value, and you're like, it's valued at, I'm going to throw random numbers out, $22,000, but don't worry, I'm not going to charge you that. Like, I'm sure we've all heard this strategy. I'm going to say, but the offer, it's only $2,000. Like, I took one of the twos off for you. And they're like, oh, okay. So then they start to entertain the thought. They start searching, can I afford that? How could I pay for that? We want them to do that. And then the reality might hit them and they're like, that's just really out of my budget right now. And you could say, well, I have a pay in full bonus, but if you need payments, this is what my payment option looks like. You're going to have all this pre-calculated out ahead of time. Now, the other option would be is if you don't want to do payments with them, which I urge you, if you don't have to, don't. If you can use Afterpay or Klarna or something like that, like please go that route as a coach um, because then that way you're protected more on are you going to continue to get those payments. If you go your having payments, there is a non-refundable deposit that is applied to their balance and you want to make sure that you are paid before you deliver the goods. So you would have to stagger that. That's why I say like go with the Klarna and all that stuff because then you don't have to kind of play defense a little bit and, and no one likes that feeling. Uh, if you have it mapped out, then it's great. And I'd recommend doing a lot of that mapping out. But more importantly, covering this main core point, ask permission before you pitch. This is why so many people get turned off with all these spammy DMs because people are pitching without getting permission to pitch. 
on a sales call, which this is a sales call, it's a follow-up call, we don't go into sales talk, pitch talk without permission. It's, I really think I could help you. You said you're ready to change. I have a program and I'd love to tell you about that program if you're open to hearing about it. I would love to tell you how we could work together if you're open to hearing about it. Are you open to hearing about it? Get the yes. This is also a psychological sales thing that we do too, is we're getting them to already say yes to us and we're priming them for, to start saying yes more. Okay, so we're not going into the full tactics of that, but I want you to know that like getting them to say yes is important. And if they say no, great. You're not telling them your secret or you're telling them your recipe and you're going to save time. You'd be like, no problem. Is it, and then ask a question. We'll be like, is it that you think you can't afford it? Is it that you think this isn't going to be a good fit for you? I'm just curious to know if I need to schedule a follow-up with you or not. And they might be flat out like, nope, don't schedule a follow-up with me. I'm good. Or yes, you know, it is actually that. I, I would love to follow up in three months from now. Great. Let me put that on the calendar. Let's go ahead and schedule an appointment for three months from now. And maybe that'll be some accountability for you. Okay. So we'll deal with those tomorrow, but noticing that you need to get yes before you pitch. All right. So now we know we need to schedule this follow-up call. We are going to make sure that we make follow-up calls a regular thing. Um, I've had some interesting first time calls and interesting follow-ups. And I mean, not me conducting them, people trying to sell me things, which I love. It's market research, right? Uh, people will be in the DMs and they'll just push the call button and start calling me uh, without asking permission, right? People want permission. So they could be like, hey, can I give you a quick call? And I'm like, oh, and it puts me on the spot. And I'm like, yeah, sure. They got a yes. They call. Uh, one lady, though, she did soon as she answered the phone, hi, hello. Okay. Let's do a meditation first. And I'm like, what? Um, uh, okay. And it, it was awkward. So making sure that there's a little bit of cushion time and just kind of re-emphasizing the conversation you had before, I think you all will be fine. Um, but you're doing that follow-up call you're checking in with them. What did they think of the last one? And then getting permission before you pitch. Now, I will say, I see a lot of business owners really struggle to create a pitch deck. Canva has some really great pitch decks. I do make sure, like, I'm going to warn, like, please make sure it's branded. Um, so I'm going to pull up my Canva. And you can go over here to presentation. And then you can type in pitch and you can pull up a pitch deck and kind of, you might find one that you kind of like that you can rebrand to your own. But for a lot of these, you can utilize this basic template. Now, I will say these might be a little different than how I would typically teach it. But as a free resource, something that you can do very quick and easy is keeping in mind, like, who is it for? You might already have that, your vision, your mission, your core services. Granted, this is going to be about your program itself. So if you want, you could even go up to program overview. And I just want you to know, like, empowering to, to help you know, like, what's available you might have a team, you might not have a team. Don't get caught up in all the things that are included. Focus more on maybe you've got like six modules or you've got a core framework. Get caught up more on like, here's your before, here's your after. Here's an example, always an example of what result someone has gotten with you or an example of what a res result would be, what a before and after would look like. So I'd recommend having a before and after. So something like this, you could have an image of a before and after. Feel free to rearrange these slides. 
And again, approach from what I was telling you, we want to start with the emotions. A before and after is a great emotion. So talking about your mission is a great emotion. What's in it for me? Meaning like, how are you going to support me? How are you going to help me? You need to fulfill that curiosity for them. And then you can break down the pricing and how much time it will take. Um, and for our, our business growth lab members um, in our office hours, it's a great time for us to review these and go through them and work on your offers. Those are great things to be doing in office hours. So I just want to let you know that there are, you could go to have like a PDF. So PDFs are also, so it could be a document of a pitch. If you like the document style, let's go to Canva templates. So there's like business proposals, project proposals. You can utilize those too, if you would rather have that document. But again, what's going to be easiest? If you just write out all your details, brainstorm, maybe you use ChatGBT a little bit to help you out, have it in a Google Doc, and then you can see which pages work for you to plug in your information and utilize them as more templates. All right, so that's for today. That's our day four. As I mentioned, for tomorrow, we are going to be deep diving into more of these like special situations, how to handle some of those. So those objections that people will typically have. I mentioned a few of them here today, but again, today's main purpose is to be thinking about that specific call. And we want to be prepared for all the objections someone would have. How to handle that where you're still getting the most out of it. You're still doing market research and you're not just Oh, okay, they don't want it, bye, on to the next person. When you just spent a ton of time with this person, and most people are not right now, they're not a no forever, all right? All right, so we'll be dropping for today, but make sure you come back tomorrow. Tomorrow is very heavy on the conversation. Let's run through some questions. It's going to be much more discussion-based uh, with less presentation happening. All right, all right. I'll see you there for Business Growth Lab. We're hopping over into our office hours. All right. See you later.